Tired of clunky tutorials and GPU errors? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to train a high quality, flexible, stable diffusion character model. No fancy hardware needed. With my tips and advice, we'll simplify the entire process and make generating high quality results effortless. But who am I? I'm Chris, but you can call me Iota. I make lots of lures, so over time, I've put together a streamlined process that makes training faster and simple. From building your data set, tagging it properly, to testing the results, I'll walk you through the exact workflow I use to consistently get high quality outputs without the guesswork. If you want to follow along, you'll find the full data set and my model linked in the description, so you can download, train, and get started right away. I start by creating a dedicated working folder. This is where everything will stay organized. Inside it, I'll add two subfolders. You can name them whatever you want, but I call mine dump and zip. The dump folder is for all your raw images, and the zip folder is where your final prepped dataset will go before uploading it for training. Now here's the foundation of any good model, the dataset. You've probably heard it before, quality over quantity but it couldn't be more true. You want a diverse set of high quality images that clearly represent what you're training. If it's a character model, that means gathering shots of the character from different angles with various expressions, poses, and ideally even different art styles. Avoid duplicates or having too many images that look nearly the same. This can lead to overfitting, making your model less versatile. You don't need to crop all your images, but using one by one aspect ratio is generally good practice, especially for consistent training results. That said, if cropping means you lose important details from your image, just leave it as it is. It's not a big deal. I personally use a mix of aspect ratios across my datasets and it works just fine, so don't stress too much about uniformity. What matters most is that the image clearly shows what you're trying to train. The goal is a flexible model that can handle a wide range of outputs. Once you've got your images, the next step is to tag them properly. This is the part I struggled with the most at first, but this tells the model what it's looking at and how you control what it learns. If you skip this step or do it half-heartedly, your results will suffer, so make sure to take care with this one. I use a tool called Koya SS for tagging, which makes grabbing the tags for later much easier, as well as it provides more controls over the tags generated. It's a quick installation from the GitHub page and you'll be ready to go. You can also use Civit AI, the same website we will use for training. To generate some tags. If you choose to use Civit services, which are kind of free, I'll explain later, then simply navigate to the website and go to this create button here. Select the training option, then upload the zip of your images. Click auto captions and make sure that you select tags unless you want to use captions. When the training is done, you can skip right ahead to training the model. If you want to use Koya, then once it's downloaded, go to the utilities tab and select WD14 captioning. Drop in the unzipped folder path to your images, then scroll down to the prefix section. This is where you'll set your trigger word, which is the main keyword that activates your LoRa later on. Just remember, the trigger word alone won't do much without supporting tags, which we'll collect later. Next, lower the general threshold to around 0.1 or 0.2. A lower threshold generates more tags, which gives the model better flexibility and a wider understanding of the image content. When you're ready, hit run. If you're not sure whether Koei is done, you can check your image folder. If you see text files showing up, then it's working. Or just look at the console. It'll let you know when tagging and captioning are complete. If you check the folder now, you'll see a text file for every image. These should be filled with tags. To get the most out of them, you'll want to go through these text files and pick out the most important and relevant keywords. The best way to do that is to copy those tags into a separate text file, something you can quickly reference or copy and paste into Stable Diffusion later. Yeah, it's a bit tedious, but if you plan on using the model often, it'll save you loads of time down the line. So for this part, I recommend picking tags from an image that clearly shows your character's main features. Stuff like their outfit, hairstyle, or details like eye color. This tag list will become your base prompt for testing and generating once the model's trained. It's usually best to go with full body shots for this, something that captures the character's detail and their full outfit as well. So first, you grab your trigger word from the beginning of the text file and add it to your tag list. This is your model's activation keyword, remember. 
so don't skip it. Next, I move on to character specific tags. I like to follow a consistent order when tagging, mostly for convenience when generating later. I'll start with the upper body features like eye color, hairstyle, body proportions, etc. Then I move on to the outfit details, tagging from head to toe. Why do I do this? Because when I'm generating images, I copy and paste these tag blocks in to stable diffusion or comfy or A111. If I only need an upper body shot, then I can backspace the lower body tags out. Simple. Same goes for outfits. Top down tagging means you can quickly trim the prompt to match the framing of your scene. That said, you don't have to follow this method exactly. Tag order does matter to some extent, but it's not super strict. This is just a workflow that keeps things neat and efficient for me. So once you've collected all your tags, pat yourself on the back because honestly, that was the hardest part. When you're happy with your tag list, take one final pass through your data set. Remove anything that might muddy the details later, like duplicates, off-model references, or inconsistent outfits. If everything looks good, go ahead and zip your folder. If you've been following along with the workflow, you should now have four things. A tag file with your prompt ready keywords, two versions of the zip folder, one that's zipped and one that's not, and a dump folder. You don't really need the dump folder anymore, but if you had any badly cropped or low quality images, it's good to keep the originals around just in case you want to go back and fix something. I usually hang on to mine until I fully trained and tested the model, then it's safe to clear out. All right, head over to civit.green. The site should look like this. Hover over the create button and then click on training. Sound familiar? Probably not if you've been skipping through the video. Not cool, man. Not cool. Under the media type section, you'll be asked to choose a lore type. Select character if you're training a character, then give the output file a name. Next up is where you upload your data set. It'll ask if you're using tags or captions. As a reminder, we're using tags, so make sure you pick that option before moving on. At this stage, it's your last chance to double check your data set. If there's a tag or an image you meant to remove, like a duplicate or something inconsistent, now is the time. But if you're like me, you did this earlier before zipping. So when you're ready, hit next, then we'll move on to the settings and test prompts. On this screen, you'll choose what base model your character will be trained on. You can stick with one of the defaults, or you can upload your own custom base. I'll be using Illustrious, which is a Stable Diffusion XL-based model. As for the training parameters, I usually only do three things. I aim for 1500 steps. You can go anywhere from 1200 to 2000, depending on the complexity of your character and outfit. To adjust the number of steps, you'll need to tweak the epoch setting. The number of steps changes automatically as you adjust the epoch. There's an algebra involved, so It'll do it for you, so just bump it up until it lands where you want. Again, I'm aiming for 1500 steps, which will work well with most characters. Other than that, make sure you check shuffle tags and enable bucket resolution. For sample prompts, you don't have to enter anything because the site will auto-generate them. However, let's be real, the auto-generated prompts are usually garbage and it's way better to use your own so you can actually see how the model is performing. Use the tags you collected along with the full outfit tags. I also like to throw in at least one random outfit that's not in the dataset, just to test how well the model handles new stuff. Sometimes I'll add a few poses too, but the point isn't to get perfect outputs here or fancy images, you just want to get a rough feel for how the model is behaving. Testing comes next. But once you've locked in your settings and added your sample prompts, it's time to hit train. The buzz credit cost depends on your settings and the size of your data set. You can earn buzz for free just by interacting with the site, commenting, reacting to posts, uploading, that kind of stuff. It adds up pretty quick as well. Or you can just buy the credits, but come on, everyone likes free. While you wait for your model to train, feel free to hit the subscribe button and like the video too. Thanks. You don't have to wait until it reaches 100%, and I'll explain that now that the training is completely finished. You'll see that it generates sample images for every few epochs, but that doesn't mean you should just grab the latest one. In fact, it's usually not recommended unless the model is seriously lacking in character detail. And even then, you're probably better off retraining or reviewing your dataset and training settings. To choose the right epoch, look through the samples and compare them. A good rule of thumb, pick the lowest epoch that gives you solid results. Sometimes you'll get lucky around Epoch 3. If the likeness is accurate and the outfit looks good, that's a win. Downloaded. If you're not sure where to start, pick one between 9 and 13. It's usually a good sweet spot for the settings I used. 
Try not to go beyond that unless necessary. I'll be grabbing number 11 myself. It looks pretty solid, and I'll probably download one or two others too. Having multiple versions to test is actually ideal, since we're about to move on to testing anyway. This is why I said earlier that you don't need to wait for full training to complete. Most of the time, you'll be choosing an earlier epoch like 11 or 13 anyway, maybe even earlier. I won't go over how to load and use the lore, that's outside of the scope of this tutorial. This one's all about training, but I will walk you through how I do some basic tests once it's done. First thing I do is simple full body generation of the character. This lets me see the whole outfit and the character details in one go. And straight away, I can tell I need to switch to a higher epoch version I downloaded. Things like the socks and the jacket weren't coming through clearly on the lower one. As I kept testing, I was pretty happy with the results. I did end up having to add a few extra tags to the master list, but overall, the likeness was spot on. Once I've done the first basic test, I just drop the model into my normal workflow and try generating something from scratch. The next thing I check for is style influence, basically making sure that the model isn't injecting some unwanted art style into the image. If your dataset has too many images in one particular visual style, it might bleed through into your outputs, which is not what you want. So I run a more detailed prompt, and this time I use control net to guide the pose. I prompt the rest of the scene like normal and I let it generate. After a couple of runs, I'm really happy with the results. You can check out some of the test generations on the model page, link in the description. And if you end up using the model yourself, share what you make. It's always cool to see what other people do with it. And there you have it. From start to finish, you've just trained your own character Laura and generated your first images with it. If this video helped you out, drop a like. It helps a ton. If there's something else you want a tutorial on, leave a comment and let me know.